here's the premise of something I was thinking about. And about a month ago, I mentioned this, and I didn't get around to changing over my computer or putting the new code in or whatever, or, or I wasn't aware that it carried over. So I had an indicator, which I started working on last few days again, where it would tell me the range of the market relative to the longer term average true range and the intraday range, which is the only range obviously you can trade if you're trading intraday. And I talked to you guys about it and mentioned that, okay, if we're at less than 50% of that intraday range, then you might not have the, the ATR, right? The average true range, then you might not have a holy grail day in the works, at least not yet. Now, let me just show you where my line of thinking is, and then it'll make a lot, it'll make a lot more sense when we get to the formula and the charts. So the ABC is a technical analysis, obviously, as I often say, if a market's going to go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, it's going to have to pass through B along the way. And that's how I came up with buy at B. You can't just blindly buy a market when it's breaking out at the B level, so to speak, except for in markets that adhere to breakout characteristics. And possibly if you'd like a go, go crazy Robin Hood market. Maybe in those cases, you can play the breakouts. Breakouts more often than not fail, except in IPOs and except if, in your, if you're in a really, really go-go market, so to speak. Now, my premise here is that a wide range bar, WRB, C, okay, let's define a wide range bar, C, because that's the ultimate, can't happen until the range becomes greater than B. So an NRB, a narrow range bar, okay, then you have an MRB, a medium range bar, and then at the top you have a wide range bar. So let's say A is an NRB and C is a WRB. Well, then obviously to pass through B, the MRB, the NRB has to become a MRB to become a WRB. Okay? Got that? <laughs> to me, it's just like an epiphany, like, wow, this is. It's one of those things that's that's on the surface just seems so damn easy. And then when you're living through it, it's just so damn hard. But and that's that's why trading is so elusive because it the concept, the basic concept, just capture a price move. It's all you gotta do, right? It's so can be so elusive at times. But that's why I always preach you want to keep it as simple as possible. So looking at this chart, at the bottom of this chart. Here's the actual formula. And I did write it with inputs, but just to make the math easy, 10 is what I'm doing for all these studies and probably 10 is what I'll stick with for the ATR. And the range is just the high minus low. And that's this is a live number here, the high minus low. And then I multiply it by 100 to get the percentage. Now, I'm using a percentage in this chart and for my research in Thinkorswim because I don't know how to put this in a separate window as an indicator. I've got them all in one indicator window. Like it would be like down here, I've got like three indicators or illustrators as I like to call them. So I don't multiply by 100. So let's say the range is five for the day on whatever I'm looking at. And my number is, 0.75 for this little range indicator. Well, I know just looking at that, okay, that's 75%. So the range is 75% of what it normally is. Anyway, it helps to make me think twice about getting in on a narrow range bar, especially if the narrow range bar, we don't know where it's going to be by the end of the day, obviously. We did, you never see, if I did, you never see my fat ass again. But we know that it's, at the moment, it's in a little narrow range and we don't want to be trading it. But if that range begins to increase and maybe it increases more than 50%, then maybe, just maybe, we have a possible wide range bar in the works. And that would be some fodder for research. How many times 
does the market get past X in its range? And let's just say X is 51%, whatever. How many times does it go to 100% of that ATR? And that might be something worth studying in and of itself. Now, I drew some lines in here, and you could actually have these draw automatically. By the way, any, if you have Metastock, I'll give you these formulas. As I said, a lot of times, I use a lot of tools in my business, probably more than I really need. But like in my personal life, I have a bit of a tool fetish. I ordered, ordered some tools today off Amazon, you know? <laughs> my wife, every now and then she'll go in the garage because everything's messy. She's like, what's this? I'm like, I don't know, it's, uh, it, it does this or whatever. Well, where do you want to put it? Like, oh, geez. <laughs> I'll pick it up later, I promise. No, I won't. Anyway, I have a boatload of tools and in, in, in some of in post, I'll put a picture of my tool cart up in here just to show you some of the tools I have. But anyway, I use a lot of tools and I'm, I kind of, it's kind of a sickness with me in, in my personal life. And I probably use too many tools in my trading life, but there's so many things that just seem to work so well for certain things. And then, as I've said before, the good folks over at Stock Charts are, are helping me to incorporate a lot of these things into their platform. But it's kind of like the ones that I'm used to using, I just kind of not ready to give them up just yet. But anyway, so you don't have to run out and do meta, use Metastock, I think is what I'm saying. Although I am I, I am an affiliate for Metastock. If you're if you're interested, let me know. And obviously I'm not an affiliate for stock charts, but I'm a big fan of their stuff. And you'll see a lot of their stuff in these presentations, obviously especially the ACP platform. So I would definitely check that out too. I use that I use that daily, by the way, and I do a lot of stuff there. And especially the multiple volatilities with this ETF stuff. And maybe next week I'll make a note and I'll revisit that. But anyway, getting back to these ranges in here, this is 50%, this is 75%, and this is 100%. And I'm just kind of noodling with these numbers, but I thought 50% would be a good number and if a market is below 50% of its average range, now we're just measuring high to low because that's all you can trade if you're trading intraday, right? Like it was for these three days here. And I'll need to go, I have to go in and look at, it's harder for me to get daily records on futures than it is stocks, but I have to figure out how to do that. But I need to go, but of course now that I'm starting to write them all down, I can see, but if I can go in and look at those three days, hopefully, and I hate to use the word hope, well, I guess hopefully in this case, hopefully I didn't trade during those three days because the range was so damn narrow. But I've got that indicator up and running again on think or swim to help me to make sure that if it's down at 30 and like I saw one of them today or recently was down at 20 or 30%, and it just kind of stayed there all day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna trade this until it begins to move. And then maybe if it is stuck at, let's say 30% of the normal daily range, okay? Then maybe put some alerts in there and then go off and, you know, I have an exercise in two weeks or, or at least during the week, on the weekend, sometimes I'll, I'll try to ride bike or walk, you know, whatever. But because I've been so busy with all this stuff, it's like I've been forgetting to to exercise. That's one of the downsides of doing all this intraday trading. And I also feel like as soon as I leave, something's gonna happen. So try to put some things in place to where you can still have a life if you are doing some of this stuff. Now, the, the good news is on a lot of this stuff, there's no reason to sit there and watch a screen all day once you enter your orders, just let them work. And we talked about this last week, use a stop entry order to get you in, and then use a limit order to get you out of half and a trailing stop automated on the other half. Now, if you've been trading for more than a day, especially if you're trading something like S&P futures or some sort of index product, you'll know that, as I said earlier, you'll print money on some days, but then you get chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, chewed up. And those little three days, I think that's, a, I think that's three birds crapping on a wire for those uh, candle people in here. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be watching on YouTube. They're gonna hit pause and they're gonna be like looking through all the books. Three birds crapping on a wire. What's that pattern? No, I think it's a fat sumo wrestler just sat on a baby or something. Anyway, the reason I pick up the candle people is it's always a pattern, okay? That's a major reversal pattern. Okay, well, what is it reversing? The market's chopping sideways, you know? It's like 
okay, whatever. Anyway, so those are bad days to trade, obviously. You can see the range. Now it's in hindsight, but the range never got above 50%. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get to here is before that turns into a wide range bar, it's gonna to have to be more than a narrow range bar. So as long as it's a narrow range bar, okay, you come in on let's say this day here. And it looks like you're looking at a 15 minute bar and it's about that big. And it looks like it's going to the moon. Well, plot yourself a daily chart and say, well, hang on, we're right in here. And then if you have the luxury of having a little indicator, and I'll give you my code if you want my code, that's fine. And you could program that in to say, well, wait a minute, we're only at 27% or 30% of the normal range. Maybe I need to sit on my hands and let everybody else fight it out a little bit. Maybe wait for that those one or two or three fake outs. And sometimes you get a narrow range bar and it starts to expand to the downside and you gotta be careful. Don't get too excited right when it starts to expand, but it might take out that prior low and then reverse and start heading higher and still watch your range. But if that range starts increasing, then you might have you a trade on your hands and at least you missed a bad trade or two. So here's another little period, just eyeballing this chart. You can see three days here where yeah, it went higher over three days. If you're in a position, that's great. You're feeling pretty good. But if you tried to trade these three days, long and or short, you probably would have gotten chewed up on those days. Now, I thought it would be cool to put a little skull and crossbones on the chart or have it programmed in whenever you were less than 50%. So in this day here, this range was less than 50% of the normal range, okay? And by the way, in TradeStation, TradeStation, I'm dating myself. I guess TradeStation's still around. And yeah, I used, I used TradeStation like 20 years ago or more. Oh God, in the, in the late 90s, 95? Jeez, oh my God, I'm getting old. Anyway, that's making me nervous. <laughs> And the problem was like, oh, I'll be dead by then. I mean, he's always saying that lately. So like, stop saying that. I mean, you're saying he's like a month younger than me. Anyway, I got it programmed in to where if it's less than 50%, it puts a little skull and crossbones on the chart. Now, this is after the fact because this is daily data. But I, I can go back in and do a little analysis and I see a little skull and crossbone. I know, okay. So I know that I shouldn't have been trading on that day. How many, how many times have you gone in on an intraday trade and at the end of the day, go in and look at the chart and it looks like that. It's a little narrow range and like, what the hell is I thinking? Not only that, it was an inside day. So I'm trying to reduce the number of what the hell is I thinking moments. And you can see that also was an inside day on that particular day. And getting, and that was, uh, that was biotech. That was Lab U. So here's the gold miner, gold miners, gold miners. Okay, and you could see now. By the way, maybe an opening gap reversal, even though it's still a narrow range day, might be a, a case where you could possibly get in. But even still, you want to be careful and, and maybe wait for a fake out too, and maybe wait for a little bit of range expansion before getting in. But if you take a look at that day there, a little skull and crossbones, you can see, getting ahead of myself here, oops, hit the wrong button. So you can see that your intraday range was less than 50%, okay? And if you look at the next day, and expand that out, you can see that this day is contained within this day. So that's, two days, even if this range is bigger than this one, right, that are still contained within the prior day. And I think Toby Crable has done that type of work too. So you can see that, yeah, the range increased, but you're still stuck within this range over here, which was a fairly narrow range day. So maybe I want to sit on my hands a little bit, or maybe in this case, you got lucky and said, well, the range hasn't expanded, but it did tail lower. And I don't know which way the market went on this day. We'll have to look. This is on August 3rd. It's funny, wants to pull up an intraday chart and look at it. This is JDST. Maybe you decided, well, it's, it, it did expand a little bit to the downside and maybe trap some people in. So I'm going to go ahead 
and play it to the upside. But as a general statement, just in perfect hindsight, that does not look like a good day to trade. But look what happened the day after, it looks pretty good. So as I said a second ago, the inside day within an inside, two days within the prior range, this one technically an inside day, this one not, this one not either, but still contained within the prior day's range, okay? So I call those an ID two, if you ever see my little chart. Now here's something that I thought was amazing, and I got pretty excited when I saw this. As I've said at nauseum tonight, my big problem is I get an S&P futures, make a lot of money, I feel like God, right? And then I get chewed up the next three or four days. Well, when I plotted this little skull indicator, which shows me which days are narrow range bar days, where, and you could say, well, it's in hindsight. Well, not exactly, because it might have been all day long, right? But it, in fact, it was all day long, because at the end of the day, think about this. Every skull I have, skull and crossbones I have on here, is on a day where the range not never got above 50%. So if it was below 50% of the 10-day ATR, okay, which includes gaps, but your intraday range is not greater than 50%, then you probably don't want to be trading on that day. Now, if I, when I have time someday, haha, -ha, but I have been doing more and more of this type of analysis, and by the way, this is one reason I love my educational business because it forces me to do a lot of this stuff. I, I knowing myself, I would probably wing it a lot, <laughs> a lot more than I do. I probably wing a little too much here and there, but I wouldn't get up at 4:55 every morning and stay here 12 hours working on this stuff, right? And I wouldn't do so much introspection. I'd probably just kind of sweep some of the stuff out under the rug and go home and do whatever. But having an educational business forces me to cement a lot of what I'm doing, even though it is still discretionary. But to my amazement, look at all these days in here. I would love to know, and someday I just need to do it. It's going to be painful. But I would love to know how much money I lost, add up all these skull and crossbone days. And remember, it seems like it's in hindsight, but at the end of the day, this is an end of the day reading. So we know that these are bad days, but we also know that the indicator during the day never got about 50%. And to me, this is amazing. I discovered this earlier today and I just couldn't wait to show you guys. And, and you know, if you're new to trading, you're probably like, what the hell is he talking about? If you, you know what, if you're new to trading, go out and trade E-minis for about two months, okay? on an intraday basis and they get back to me i bet you could be like dave dave what was that thing you showed me and not the trade can you explain that again <laughs> but this should get you excited i mean all these little these little skull and crossbone days on on when not to trade s p futures or intraday etfs or whatever other you know pick your favorite market you want to go in on an intraday basis. David Secretary says, I want to party with you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Did I just say that? You're probably thinking I want to party with you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway. 